everybody and welcome to Heal Heat. My name is George Coles and on this episode we're doing a top 10. Topic of the top 10, super heavyweights. Now what defines a super heavyweight? There have been different instances where different people have been called as such. For the purposes of this video, you, you would have had to been 350 pounds or greater for a good portion of your career. Now there are going to be some people that fluctuated, that were less than that during their career, but for their most popular portion, they weighed over 350 pounds. That is what I'm using as a qualifier. With that being said, jumping right in at number 10, the Ugandan giant Kamala. In a character that would be considered today ultra problematic and probably borderline racist. However, in the 1980s he was one of the most enjoyable and enduring characters. One of the one of the characters that you love to hate and just enjoyed his work. He was portrayed as a Ugandan savage straight out of the jungle of Jerry Jerry Jarrett's backyard, by the way. If you ever if you seen his debut video, they filmed it in Jerry Jarrett's backyard. Here was a guy, Sugar Bear Harris, that wasn't working with his self being the gimmick. So they created this crazy gimmick of Kamala, the Ugandan headhunter, and somehow it worked. Somehow fans went for that. And I know, again, it is a problematic character now. At the time it wasn't, and I don't feel like the intent was there for it to be inherently racist or stereotypical. It just was a product of the time. And I love Kamala. I love the Kamala gimmick. I loved when he would pop up on Rawls randomly and when you know, they just would have him there. One of my favorite times was when they were doing the diva search and he was interacting with the divas. I thought that was very interesting. For me, Kamala was a guy I just loved and I never questioned what the intent was, which is why he makes this list. Now coming from that are number nine, Rikishi, a.k.a. Fat Two. I'm specifically going on the Rikishi portion because, like I said in the beginning of the video, I think earlier in his career, he didn't quite get up to the 350-pound range. It wasn't until later to when he became the Sultan and then Rikishi that he got that big. Um, Rikishi's a guy, again, he's one of the guys in the Attitude Era that's absolutely beloved. Much like Kamala, he never was the main talent in the in the company. He has involved in some pretty big storylines. The one that everybody seems to remember most is one that was kind of is kind of goofed on and that's him being the one that I did it for you, I did it for The Rock where he ran over Stone Cold Steve Austin. But go back and think about it. His dancing with Too Cool, it's still awesome. His matches his stink face, um, it, just everything about Rikishi was cool. And it's very, it was an enjoyable part of the product during one of the biggest times in wrestling history. For that, he makes the list. Now, our number eight, a personal favorite of mine, John Tenta, a.k.a. Earthquake. He's also been the Shark in WCW, and I believe Avalanche is what they also called him there. But as Earthquake, boy did he make an impression on me. He was a guy that was a, a challenger to Hulk Hogan when Hulk Hogan was the unquestionable champion of WWE. Him and Typhoon made a great tag team as the Natural Disasters. I honestly don't think that Earthquake quite got what he should have. I think Earthquake at some point could have been at least an Intercontinental Champion, not just a Tag Team Champion. I think he's a really good wrestler, 
and I don't think he got to really fully show what he was capable of. I mean, Earthquake can move. He was fast. He wasn't a lumbering giant, which a lot of guys that, of his size are. To me, I thought he, he was great. I loved it, what he would do. I loved the uh, the tremors where he would jump around the ring. Just the, just the whole pageantry of it made his character great for me. And he was believable. You would believe that this guy could cause damage to Hulk Hogan or the Ultimate Warrior or whoever he was facing at the time because he probably could. He was a legitimate sumo wrestler. All that being said, that's why Earthquake's on here. I love the guy and I... You know, if it was just... If this was going by my, my personal favorites and it didn't take into effect outside things, Earthquake would probably be higher, to be honest with you. Now, coming off of Earthquake, our number seven. A guy that there's not a lot of footage out there on, his footage hasn't lasted. What we've seen of him is mostly as a commentator or an authority figure, and that's Gorilla Monsoon. It's hard to historically put into context how important Gorilla Monsoon is, because again, there's not a lot of footage of Gorilla Monsoon wrestling. However, when he did, he was a top star of the Northeast. And at the time, at, during the territory system, the Northeast was one of the biggest territories in all of America. Gorilla was a guy that you could put in there with Bruno San Martino and people would believe it. You could put him in there with Pedro Morales and help make Pedro a bigger star just by being in the ring with Gorilla Monsoon. He's a guy, he had the thing with, um, with Muhammad Ali. He was trusted to do that. I mean, everything about Gorilla. And a lot of people beloved Gorilla for his time on commentary with Bobby the Brain Heenan. I'm one of them. But his impact in the pro wrestling world, even if he didn't do that, he's a definite Hall of Famer just for the impact he made and how much he meant to the WWF and how much he meant into the transfer of it becoming the WWF. For me, Gorilla's a guy, again, like I said, there's not a lot of film out there on him, but from what, what I've seen, he was fantastic, and, and from where I know he plays and know his historical value, Gorilla Monsoon makes it on the list for all those reasons. Now, coming off of that, number six. The world's strongest man, Mark Henry. Mark Henry had a tumultuous start to his career um, from, from the beginning of 96 to probably about 2002. He was just a guy. They tried everything with him, this sexual chocolate, which I thought was awesome. But it never felt like Mark Henry was going, at that time period, it didn't ever feel like Mark Henry was going to become a main event player. And then some a light switch went on. He was sent down to work on his game. When he came back to the WWE and came back with the Hall of Pain, Mark Henry solidified himself as one of the great big men of all time. Because not only did his in-ring work improve exponentially, so did his microphone work. And whether he was a East, whether he was a, a champion on SmackDown, the World Heavyweight Champion, or the guy that did the pink salmon suit with John Cena, everything about Mark Henry became more and more believable. You believed how destructive he was. You believed that he was a guy that could end your career. You believed that this guy could beat guys like Batista, Cena, Undertaker. Kurt Angle, all of his luminaries because he was credible. And that's the one thing a lot of people take for granted just how great Mark Henry was. And to me, he was one of the highlights of any show he was on during that time frame. Hence why I think Mark Henry deserves to be on this list. Now our number five. Bam Bam Bigelow. 
WWE doesn't talk about Bam Bam Bigelow as much as I think they should. Not only did he main event WrestleMania against Lawrence Taylor, which means he was in, entrusted in carrying what was to be a big time event for them, he also went on and became an ECW World Champion. And he also became bigger than that. To me, his, his work in ECW with the Triple Threat and also his work later on in his work in Japan and also his work in WCW outweigh whatever he did in WWE. And that's saying a lot because he was a WrestleMania main eventer at the time where there were only a handful of people that could say that. You know, other than like Hulk Hogan, Randy Savage... Andre the Giant, there's not too many other people that at, as of WrestleMania 11 could say that they main event at WrestleMania. But Bam Bam was one of them. And it gets forgotten in time just how special he was. He was doing moonsaults before anyone of his size was doing that. He was doing stand-up drop kicks and cartwheels in the ring. And he was just an immensely talented wrestler with one of the best looks in the history of wrestling. His flames on his head, his tattooed body, the uh, the whole the gear that he wore, it was so memorable right off the bat. And everybody I, I know that loved wrestling during his time loved Bam Bam Bigelow. Bam Bam to me, I think he deserves more recognition than he gets. And I think it's a real shame that he's not talked amongst as one of the greats of his era, like all the re like a lot of these other guys are. When his work and his output definitely put him up there. Now coming from Bam Bam, our number four, The Big Show, A.K.A. The Giant, A.K.A. Paul White. What can you say about a guy that his first match on television is him beating Hulk Hogan for the WCW Championship? I mean, where's the trajectory go from there? He's won every championship WWE had to offer. He's been a multiple-time world champion, a multiple-time tag champion. Yes, he switched back and forth between heel and face, and yes, I don't think that even as huge as Big Show got, that they ever fully capitalized on him and made him what he could have been. Big Show is as close to Andre the Giant as everybody's, anybody is ever going to be. His charisma is off the charts. His athletic ability is outstanding. There's footage of Big Show doing moonsaults. For, and I, I said that about Bam Bam, but we're, we're talking about a guy that was another 100 pounds heavier than Bam Bam, and also probably about a foot taller than Bam Bam, if not, if not more. And his career kind of took a hit because he became the guy that turned heel and face on a, on a whim. If you needed a face for a storyline, you had the Big Show. If you needed a heel for the storyline, you needed you had the Big Show. If he could have had longer runs where he was a heel for eight, ten years, or a face for seven, eight, ten years, it would be he's his career would probably be looked at more favorably. However, with all that being said. He's probably the most highly decorated wrestler on this list. And that's that's not a slouch mentioning the names that I already have with the names that are upcoming. Big Show's absolutely a legend, a surefire first round Hall of Famer in my opinion. Now going from one Hall of Famer to the next, our number three, the mighty Yokozuna. Yoko, to me, for a guy that was five to six, sometimes even 700 pounds in the ring, moved around 
just as well as anybody else. Yoko was intimidating. Yoko was fierce. Yoko was fast. And the combination of his speed and his size was devastating. I never really thought that the Hulk Hogan leg drop was a violent finisher, but when Yoko did a leg drop, it looked devastating, because look at how huge his legs are. Look at just the power, his belly-to-belly -belly suplex, his bonsai drop. I honestly don't know how, and I, I don't know how people survive the bonsai drop. How do you survive a 500-pound man dropping onto your chest with the force that he would get into it? And Yoko, he was just, he's one of the greats of all time, in my opinion. He's gotten more flowers since his passing than he did during his time, which is really sad because I think people don't really respect the run that Yokozuna had. And it's shorter. It's probably the shortest run of anybody on this list. I mean, realistically, he only was on in wrestling for roughly 10 years, where the rest of these guys had 15, 20-year careers. I, it's really, it's such a shame that he died so young and he couldn't get his issues under control because I do think that if Yoko could have got back a little bit better shape and made it back in the, into the Attitude Era on either company, on either WCW side or, East, or um, WWE side, even ECW, I think he would have been a guy that could have elevated and elevated his historical standing because, again, he wouldn't have felt out of place. He felt like he deserved to be there. What a great wrestler. What an amazing talent. I love Yokozuna. Now, coming from Yoko, our number two, Big Van Vader. Other than the Big Show, probably, and, and I'm not looking at their records, so I would say Vader and Big Show are the two most highly decorated guys on this list. Vader is an absolute legend in America, in Japan, in any company he ever worked for. I believe at one point Vader was a world champion on three different continents. Just to show, goes to show you how immensely talented he he was and how gifted the Vader character was and how he could sell and how he was so believable. It was just this big menacing bruising guy. Much like I said with Bam Bam, Big Show and Yoko, he could move around just like a guy that was a hundred pounds less than him at sometimes even better than guys that were a hundred pounds less than him. His WWF or WWE run it was very lackluster, but I don't think that Vince McMahon ever got the Vader character. To get the full extent of Vader, you have to see Vader in Japan. You have to see Vader in WCW. You have to see Vader versus Sting, or Vader versus Ric Flair, or Vader versus Stan Hansen, one of the most vicious things ever. Vader gets his eye popped out and keeps wrestling. I mean, the guy was an absolute beast. He was a mastodon, as they say. Big Van Vader, just a great guy. I wish they would have gave him the Hall of Fame that he wanted while he was still alive. And that's really sad that they didn't. But to me, he was always a Hall of Famer. It's the reason why he made this list. And I, I just, like I, I keep saying, I gush over, I'm gushing over all these guys. I really enjoyed Big Van Vader. Now before we get to our number one, I do a little something here on my list called the best of rest. Basically it's people that were considered for the list but didn't quite make it for whatever reason. First of the best of the rest, Tugboat aka Typhoon aka the Shockmaster. Yeah I know, Shockmaster's terrible. But I love the natural disasters. I talked about it when I was talking about Earthquake. 
I liked his run as Tugboat, Friend of Hulk Hogan. Of the Friend of Hulk Hogan gimmicks, he was probably my favorite, either him or Hillbilly Jim. And I really think that if not for the debut, the Shockmaster could have been something even great even then. The wrestler behind it is a fantastic wrestler. Honestly, the only reason he doesn't make this list is because everybody else on this list is more accomplished than he is. And that's not a knock on Tugboat. It's just the facts. Plus, you gotta add in the Shockmaster aspect of it, and... Yeah, there's that. So, I mean, unfortunately, that knocks it down a little bit. That's why he didn't make the list. Last but not least on our best of the rest, the mighty King Kong Bundy. Bundy was a guy that, when I was a kid, absolutely scared me. He was a guy that broke Hulk Hogan's ribs. He had the main event against Hulk Hogan in the cage at WrestleMania 2. And, and then you go back and you watch his work from World Class and even later on. Bundy was just amazing. He, they called him a walking condominium. The guy was massive. And he put that menace into everything he did. You really felt a sense of danger for your favorite wrestler when they were going up against King Kong Bundy. Because at any point, he could splash them and go for the five count. And it's just amazing what he was able to accomplish and how big he became. He gets a knockoff here because he's considered his and WrestleMania main event is considered one of the worst main events in WrestleMania history. I know, I understand. But to me, the guy was just, he was a bankable talent all through that generation. Now before we get into number one, Please like this, comment, share, subscribe if you haven't. If you think I put someone up on the list too high, someone down too low, left someone off altogether, let me know what you think down here in the comments. Coming off of that, our number one, if you've been following the list, you've heard his name a couple times already, and there's a giant size hole missing. That's Andre the Giant. It is arguable to say that Andre the Giant is one of the five greatest draws in the history of wrestling. Without Andre the Giant, professional wrestling isn't where it is today. And I mean that in a very positive way. Without Andre the Giant, Hulkamania is not as big as it is. The WWE is not as big as it is. Pro wrestling itself is not as big or popular as it is. And Andre was an absolute, absolute, one-of-a-kind talent. His charisma was off the charts from a guy that mostly you could not understand what he said. He spoke in a, with a very thick French accent that was hard to understand. But his charisma, his likability... His, the overall nature of a guy that was 7 foot 5 or whatever he was billed at and 500 plus pounds was just all inspiring. Think about this. In the time that Andre was in at his best in the 1970s, most areas had maybe five television channels, most had three. So you didn't see a guy like Andre. You might see him once a year, and when you would see him, it was special. Because he would only be brought in for that one big show your company was running a year. And he'd be brought in for a battle royal or a tag match or a special enforcer. And he made people come out in droves. I've heard accounts where a territory that would normally sell 2,000 tickets, when Andre would be in town, they'd sell 5,000. If they sold 5,000, they'd sell 10,000. If they sold 10,000, they'd sell 12. Andre's presence itself would almost double the fan base for the shows that he appeared on. And without Andre the Giant, 
we do not get WrestleMania 3, which were WrestleMania 1 and WrestleMania 2 were successes. WrestleMania 3 was the rocket that really took WWF and cemented them as the top pro wrestling company in the world. And there was no looking back after that. There, Andre's just, he's so lovable. Everything about Andre the Giant, even his giant machine run, is absolutely amazing. For that reason, and his immense legacy, Andre is the number one super heavyweight in my opinion. And again, like I said earlier, if you think I left somebody off, if you think I put something up too high, let me know in the comments what you think. Like, comment, share. And if you watch this long, I know you're enjoying this video. If you watched it all the way to the end, put Giant Machine in the comments for me. With all that being said, my name is George Coles, and this has been another Heel Heat Top 10.